Hi everyone, welcome back to our next episode in our 60 second tip series. Today I'd like to do a little bit of a different one. I would like to uh, discuss the top five things we should do as owners for our dogs. I get all the time from people asking, um, can you give me any tips, any, any tricks, any advice on X? Um, so hopefully this will help you. So, number one, find and consult with a good, trusted vet. Your, your vet is your lifeline to, with your dog. Your vet staff is your lifeline for your dog. Find one that you know and trust and uh, you can turn to in times of trouble. Um, I always say there's lots of vets out there and there's lots of good vets out there. But when the crap hits the fan, you want a really good diagnostician, somebody who you trust and you can stand behind. Really, really, really important. So number two, read science. This is a big one in the dog community. There is a lot of information out there, and there's a lot of psychobabble out there. Um, if any of you have read my online blogs, uh, if any of you read anything that I've written, um, or watched any of these videos, you'll know that I'm a big one for reading the science behind dog training. There's a lot of opinions out there, and you know what, I'm not dismissing them all, but those opinions are contradicted by science. A person can have whatever opinion they want. They can stress it however they want, but if they're not able to back it up with actual science, what they're saying probably isn't accurate. So read the science. Number three, stimulate your dog, both, both physically and mentally. Look, your backyard, um, running around in, in your backyard, bringing your dog to a dog park, while that can be good, and I say can be, um, it, it's no replacement for a good walk. It's no replacement for a good obedience session. It's no replacement for good, proper exposure. Um, make sure you stimulate your dog, both physically and mentally. A lot of people will get caught up in walking their dog. So it takes five kilometers one week to beat their dog out, and then the next week it's six kilometers, and next week it's seven kilometers, next week it's eight kilometers. And eventually, you as owners are just dealing with bored marathon runners. Um, a, a good walk is invaluable, but don't discount the obedience sessions to go along with it. Don't discount uh, bringing your dog to new places. Uh, those things can be very valuable in your dog's development. Number four, be proactive with your training practices. One of the biggest mistakes new owners make is that they don't engage in training early enough, or they don't engage in proper training early enough. And I'll give you an example. So, as a puppy, your dog is runs over and jumps in your lap, and, and you suck the living daylights out of them, kiss them, hug them, they get lots of coos and oohs and ahs, and they're getting that from everybody. The problem with that is, if you continue to do that, you're reinforcing the jumping behavior. When your dog hits 8, 9, 10 months old, is 80, 90, 100 pounds, and they're still doing it, it's not their problem. This is something that they have learned. This is something that you have reinforced. Engage in proper training practices early. If you do that, you'll meet with a lot less frustration from both you and your dog later on. The number five, and this is a kind of a, a biased one, take a pet first aid course. We as humans, we know the value of proper first aid. We know the value of what we need to do or knowing what to, we need to do in the case of an emergency situation with humans. As a matter of fact, most of the workplaces that we that we work in now mandate their employee their employees to take a first aid course. Uh, as pet owners, very few of us know what to do in the case of an emergency with our dogs. Do you know what to do if your dog starts choking? Do you know what to do if your dog has a heart attack? Do you know what to do in the case of a bad bleed? All the those topics are covered in a good first aid course. St. John Ambulance has a wonderful first aid course. Uh, it was actually designed by vets, by a panel of vets and vet techs um, in consultation with St. John Ambulance. 
and it is a great course to take part in. Uh, usually the course lasts anywhere between four and six hours and uh, at the end you get your certification, same thing as you do with an, a normal human first aid course. Really, really, really valuable. Anyway, I hope this makes sense to everybody. I hope everybody's having a lovely day in this uh, thunder and lightning and mozzie weather. Uh, any questions, feel free to comment below. And as always, feel free to check me out online, www.nldoglasburg.com. Thanks, everybody.